Just yesterday, a pro member reached out with a request on how to create a scroll animation. When I explored this website, I discovered a standout scroll animation where cards are pinned and animate in a dynamic 3D style as you scroll. This effect has become very popular and since we hadn't covered it on our channel, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to demonstrate how to replicate this scroll animation using HTML, CSS, GSAP and scroll trigger. While a simple version of this can be created using CSS sticky position, achieving that cool scale animation and ensuring the transformations are smooth made scroll trigger an ideal choice. If you find these videos helpful, please leave a like and might subscribe as well if you haven't yet. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's dive into the code. Let's start by creating a container. First of all, we'll add a logo which is going to be a link. Next up, we need a few sections. We'll start by adding a hero section. It will contain only an H1 with some text. Next, we need those stick images. So we are going to create separate sections for that. I'll add another section and give it a class name of card. I'll add an image wrapper and put an image element inside it. Let's duplicate this section a few more times based on the number of stick images you want. Finally, I'll add one last section for the footer. It will contain an H1. Now here comes the crucial step. Whichever sections we want to pin using scroll trigger, I'll add another class name of pinned to those sections. Except the last one. It will have a class name of scroll because we are not pinning the last image and it should scroll regularly. That's pretty much it. Let's get to styling. First up, we'll reset the default margin, padding and set the box sizing to border box for all elements. For the HTML and body, we set both width and height to 100%, apply a font family and set the background color to black. Images in our sections will fill their containers completely and maintain their aspect ratios by setting object fit to cover. Next, the container that wraps everything also spans the full width and height of the viewport. Our logo, positioned absolutely at the top center of the page, has some padding and a high Z index to ensure it stays on top. The link in the logo has no text decoration, a white color and is slightly larger at 24 pixels. Each section is designed to take up the full viewport with a width of 100 viewport width and a height of 100 viewport height. In the hero section, the H1 is centrally placed both horizontally and vertically with a massive font size of 200 pixels, white color and slightly negative letter spacing. The card with the class scroll is positioned relatively to allow natural page scrolling. The image container inside each card section is also absolutely positioned at the center with specific dimensions to maintain its prominence on the page. Lastly, our footer is half the viewport height centered using flexbox both horizontally and vertically and styled with a large legible font. That wraps up our CSS. We kick things off by registering the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. Next, we set up an event listener that waits for the entire document to be loaded before running our script. This ensures that our HTML elements are fully loaded and accessible. We start by selecting the footer and the last card marked with the class scroll. These elements play key roles in our animation sequence. We also gather all sections that have the class pinned into array. 
These are the sections that we'll be focusing on for our scroll trigger animations. First, we use for each loop to iterate through each pin section. Initially, we grab the image within the section using query selector. This allows us to specifically target and manipulate the image as the user scrolls. Next, we determine the next section our script should reference once the current one is done. If the current section isn't the last, we set next section to the subsequent one. Otherwise, we default to the last card, ensuring our animation has reached the endpoint. To create a fluid and continuous animation, we calculate the endpoint for the scaling animation of the image. We achieve this by setting end scale point. This involves measuring the distance between the top of the next section and the top of the current section, then appending this value to the top property. This calculation ensures that our animation aligns perfectly with the natural flow of the web page as it scrolls. Next, we configure each section to stick at the top of the viewport as you scroll. Using GSAP's 2 method, we initialize a scroll trigger for each section. The trigger for this animation is the section itself, starting when the top of the section hits the viewport top. The sticky effect is maintained until the section reaches a dynamic endpoint. If it's the last pin section, this point extends by half the height of the last card. Otherwise, it ends just before the footer becomes visible, ensuring a smooth transition. We enable pinning with pin set to true and set pin spacing false. The scrub property is adjusted to 1, allowing the animation to progress smoothly in sync with your scroll. Next, we animate the images within each section, making them scale down as the user scrolls. We start with the images at full size, scale of 1, and animate them to half their size, scale of 0.5. We achieve this using GSAP's from2 method, where the scaling is tied to the scroll position through scroll trigger. The trigger is the current section, with the animation starting when the section reaches the top of the viewport and ending at the predefined end scale point. The scrub parameter is again set to 1. Lastly, we add a fading effect to the hero section's headline. First, we select the H1 element within the hero section. We then create a new scroll trigger that monitors the entire body of the document. The animation starts right at the top of the page and continues as the page scrolls down through 4 times the viewport height. We use the scrub parameter set to 1 to ensure the opacity transition of the headline is smooth and directly tied to the scroll position. In the onUpdate function, we dynamically adjust the opacity based on the scroll progress. The opacity starts at 1, fully visible and gradually fades to 0 as the user scrolls enhancing the interactive storytelling of the page. That's pretty much it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.